So I've come away to stay in a yurt for the weekend, just to get away from all the madness, get a little bit off grid. And I thought while I'm here, it was a good chance to talk about shooting simple and the importance of being a bit minimalist. We all know what it's like with social media and the constant notifications and the endless temptation to scroll, which is why I end up getting one of these things. But it just all seems so busy and there's so much noise. And then you've got the news and coronavirus. So for me, the medicine to that is disappearing into the woods, into a yurt where there's no phone signal, the only power is solar, there's a compost toilet, and the shower is a bucket. What have I brought? Well, I got my camera equipment. I got some vintage cameras, brought some film cameras that we'll have a play around with. Even bought a new one in a shop yesterday. And uh, I brought a book. We've got some food. We'll laugh, we'll watch the stars, we'll chat. Like the good old days. In the beginning, I couldn't wait to buy more gear. Any YouTube videos I watched or magazines I read would just give me endless ideas for things I wanted to buy. I can honestly say I have waited years for this camera. I actually want this now. This is my new Grail camera. It's the Hasselblad 907. But I'm not like that anymore. Sure, there are lots of things I'd like to buy, but I'm more focused on what I need to buy rather than just splash out on something I don't have. And the main reason for that is I think that I know my ways of working and what I want to capture. I know what my gear is capable of and I already own everything I need to cover 99% of what I shoot on a regular basis. So here's my main kit, Canon EOS R. This is what I shoot with almost every day, coupled with a 24 to 105 lens that very rarely comes off. It's my main workhorse. I've got so many usable focal lengths for run and gun shooting, vlogs, weddings, cooking, commercial shoots. It's so versatile. The GoPro Hero 6. This is such a good utility camera. And by that, I mean it can do so many different things that a full size DSLR or mirrorless camera can't. Head mounted, chest mounted, on a car, bike or skateboard, or as I've done a few times, inside a mug or coffee pot for a unique point of view. Plus, they're waterproof. This was my main underwater video camera while I was shooting in Greece and shot all the underwater stuff for the Mike and Maurice documentary on. I shot underwater stills on a full DSLR with an expensive housing, but the GoPro made life far easier while trying to stay alive underwater and focusing on just capturing the best video I could. The Mavic Pro drone. This is the OG Mavic and I've had it for years. I shoot a fairly limited amount of aerial footage, usually just scene setting stuff to establish locations. So I've resisted the temptation to drop a load of cash on a new model because I'm not convinced for the screen time it will get, the quality difference will be hugely noticeable to your average person. The Zoom F2 audio recorder. I always carry an audio recorder in my kit. If the weather is too windy, they can save the day. They're so easy to use and they don't take up any space. I normally carry a Tascam DR10L, which is my go-to, but I'm playing around with the F2 with its 32-bit float audio, which is kind of like raw footage for audio, and you don't have to set any audio levels. The Rode Video Mic Pro. This is always on top of my EOS R. It's reliable in almost all scenarios if the environment isn't too noisy or windy. And even if I don't end up using it, it's a great audio source to sync with the Zoom F2 or a Tascam DR10L. The Variable ND. 
This is one of the most important things in my camera bag because I do a lot of run and gun stuff. I used a fairly cheap one for many years, which served me well, but I have recently switched to the Peter McKinnon Signature Polar Pro model, and it is excellent. The Manfrotto B3 tripod. This is small, light and portable and mainly gets used for long exposure landscape photography, but it's also a great tripod for static video shots on the go. Spare batteries and SD cards, because, well, that's just sensible. Toolkit. Screwdrivers, Allen keys, a knife, painkillers and various other bits, just because you never know when you're going to need them. Whether it's to loosen a mounting plate, cut off some cable ties or anything else that comes up invaluable. I also often carry an EOS RP with a Sigma 100mm macro lens. This is my second camera that I often have on me if I'm shooting food or content that needs real close-up detail. If I'm shooting a wedding, this will probably be a wider lens on a gimbal. That's my main kit that I pull from on a regular basis. There are other bits that come out now and then, but if they were all lost in a fire, I wouldn't be too bothered because I can still make the video content I want to make with what's in my camera bag. In fact, if I'm traveling on a flight or even just working around the UK, I'll take my Peak Design bag, which has a small camera cube and pretty much take only the OSR and a mic because I can do so much with just a camera. My life has enough choices in it and I just want to make as few as possible. I just want to focus on getting out there, shooting, capturing the moment and then telling the story in the edit. That's what's important to me. More stuff is more problems and I don't want to miss a moment because I'm changing a lens. I've used this camera and this lens for such a long time that I've got to know it really well. It just feels like an extension of myself which sounds a bit naff, but never mind. let's move on. I like that, I think that makes me a better shooter and a better storyteller. Here's a few things I won't carry around. One, a gimbal. Unless I know I need to do some tracking shots, following someone while they're walking or things like that, I just won't bring it. The stabilization in the mirrorless cameras is so good that I can capture usable shots using just my own body movements, especially if I know I can shoot at 50 frames and slow it down by half in post, and then sometimes go a step further and whack a stabilizer on it in final cut if necessary. These are digital tools that help us. A slider. I used to use a slider all the time, especially at weddings, but they're a pain to carry and can have issues if they're not perfectly balanced and set up. So I can't remember the last time I used one, to be honest, because it's been replaced by either a gimbal, rarely, or just my hands and the camera. Lenses. Unless it's a wedding or a shoot that needs a specific lens, I don't carry spare lenses. The 24 to 105 does everything I need it to most of the time, and the story I'm telling nine times out of 10 doesn't get enhanced by changing the lens, at least not for what I'm shooting for. But what if the lens smashes or breaks? Well, in that case, I'm just gonna be damn miserable and I'm not gonna wanna shoot. But if I can bring myself to carry on, I've always got my iPhone. Remember, I'm not talking about commercial shooting here, so there's not a paying client that's gonna get let down. A gray card. We should know how to get our white balance close enough to shoot with, it's not rocket science, but don't go sticking it on auto for the love of God. But get to know a little about lighting and you'll not need a piece of material to balance on. A lot can be fixed in post. I've numerous times forgotten to change the white balance and had to sort it in the edit. Shh. The more versatile the light, the more options you have in the field. On camera lighting. Unless you're shooting a Blair Witch sequel or something in the dark and want to look like a squinting deer in the headlights, don't bother carrying a light around. Natural light is usually the best solution. A light can be useful if you're shooting when there's no natural light around, but don't carry it unless you think you've got really good reason to need it. A selfie stick or gorilla pod. I think we're almost over the gorilla pod era. My mate Stricky proved to me years ago that a camera in your hand is more stable than on a pod. If you need it further from your face, you're probably using the wrong lens. Maybe I should start thinking about using a 16 to 35.
camera strap. It's only a small thing, but I've never liked them. They can be handy for trying to help stabilize shots, but I don't feel I need them. I always just feel the strap stops me from using my camera how I need to use it in the moment, and the strap never feels safe to let it dangle, so what's the point? But you can't just jump into this scenario. If you're just starting out or you've bought some new gear, you're probably going to need to try some things to get to know what works for you. And that's a fun journey, right? That's part of the experience. Enjoy it. <laughs> but don't beat yourself up worrying about getting something newer or better. Chances are what you've got now is entirely good enough to get you to the next stage of your filmmaking career, even if that is just an iPhone. But for me, the quicker I can get to the point where I know the gear I'm using, the better. At the end of the day, these are tools, and they're here to enable us to capture moments and tell stories. And it's just about having the right tools for the job. But this way isn't for everyone, and that's totally fine. If you've got the money, time, and ability to carry a load of stuff around with you, go and have a great time doing it. It's part of the journey. If you have things in your camera bag that you think are essential that I don't, let me know, because I'd love to hear how other people work, because if there's something I can learn from and use, I'm gonna do it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please join me for the next one, like, subscribe, and all that stuff. It really does help. Thank you very much. Bye. What am I going to do now? Are you still here? Right.